Welcome to our roundtable session. Today we have Hector Rodriguez, a political strategist. Welcome to the show, Hector. Thank you, Franklin. Glad to be here. Great. So let's talk about some of the uh, topics that are uh, going on right now. Let's start with the uh, presidential election. Uh, how do you see in both the Democratic uh, side and the Republican side what is going on? First, let's start talking about the Democratic side. How do you see this race going? I think the Democratic Party has been organized really in their debates and the candidates have brought up the issues without uh, 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 with, with much decorum actually considering uh, what the Republicans have put forth. But uh, in the Democratic side it appears that uh, Hillary Clinton is really uh, getting a lot of support from the minority sector and carrying her through. The black community has been very loyal to her and the Latino community, the women are coming in. And so her, her uh, political machinery is functioning well for her now. It's, uh, it's in an uptick right now and she's leading with over half the candidates uh, or the delegates that she needs to get the nomination. Uh, Mr. Sanders, uh, you know, a lot of people are feeling the burn. He's uh, uh, penetrating a lot of constituencies that he had before. A lot of blacks are coming on to his campaign. Uh, we know he has the young people, but it's not ample and wide enough uh, to get the nomination, I don't feel. Uh, he's got to win all of the uh, upcoming states, uh, really, to, to go in uh, and, and win this. And I think it's going to be quite a challenge for him. So I think uh, while many people feel the burn, I think Hillary Clinton uh, will be the nominee for the Democratic Party. On the Republican side, uh, there is complete chaos. Uh, uh, Mr. Trump has uh, changed the whole diameter here and uh, even uh, he's divided his party and now establishment Republicans are uh, screwing to try and head him off at the pass. He's got a uh, over half the delegates that he needs. Uh, Mr. Uh, Marco Rubio is out. Uh, Ted is in now, Ted Cruz, uh, to try and be the man. Kasich will probably be dropping out now, although he won Ohio. But it appears that Mr. Trump is going to get the domination and there's going to be a bloody battle and chaos in the uh, GOP uh, convention. And Trump even uh, indicates that if he's not the nominee that there'll be riots in the uh, convention. This does not pretend well uh, for the uh, GOP and it would not pretend well for the American people if such a disgruntled uh, uh, person would come in as President of the United States. An interesting uh, scene for sure to uh, keep up with. Uh, now let's talk about the Supreme Court justice uh, vacancy that uh, we have. Uh, President Barack Obama last Friday announced uh, his appointment of or uh, the selection of a judge, justice to the Supreme Court, uh, Merrick Garland uh, from uh, Washington D.C. What do you what do you think about that? Well, the Republicans have brought the chaos of the campaign directly into the Supreme Court nomination situation. Again, creating chaos for the American people as well in terms of the democratic process. Uh, you've got a situation uh, that they have always tried to stop Barack Obama, even in naming and listening, uh, having giving a hearing to a Supreme Court justice. Right now the Supreme Court is four and four, it's tied. Uh, the president is doing his job. He quickly uh, did an analysis and named a moderate uh, to the court that everyone could support, Mr. Garland. And uh, no, the Rep uh, the Republicans are saying, no, we're not going to give him a hearing. Maybe they phoned him and that's it. That is uh, unbecoming. <coughs> it is unconstitutional, actually. So the very Constitution that they rest their case on, they're violating right in the face of the American people. By the time, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Garland is approved after the hearings which they're going to delay and then he comes into office it'll be three or four months that the American people have no one in the Supreme Court of the United States that will that will serve them and create the, the, the balance that is needed. And another issue also for Washingtonians is that nobody in the Senate will be able to advocate for the, the citizens of the District of Columbia unlike other states where Senators represent them in the Senate. Uh, DC doesn't have any representatives in the in the Senate, and so how do you see that playing out? Absolutely, Franklin. We have no voice uh, in Washington DC. Has no voice uh, in the selection of a Supreme Court justice. To me, that's not just. 
if we talk about justice and we talk about a constitution and, and, and the people here who are taxpayers and veterans and the Republicans talk about veterans and veterans rights, we don't have a voice in selecting the Supreme Court uh, justice. And so uh, I think that the, um, that, uh, that has to change and uh, we're hoping that, uh, that we will have statehood soon in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> so that we can have our elected officials impact upon the decisions that are made in the Congress with respect to war and with respect to justice. And now moving on to another hot topic. It's uh, the president plans to uh, travel to Cuba next week. Uh, how, do you, how do you see this? Is this uh, moving uh, relations a little closer uh, between Cuba and the U.S. now? Uh, when the president goes to Cuba, how do you see this uh, taking place? I think the president uh, is, uh, has been very courageous uh, and stepped up and, and um, where for 50 years there has been no real communications and so what the president is doing is he's basically putting the political issues aside and the politicians aside and then let the people get at each other by uh, visitations people can now visit Cuba and, and uh, communicate with each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis that's the best way that kind of engagement is the best way to bring democracy uh, to Cuba and uh, the president uh, in this trip, I think uh, he's also making a trip to um, uh, to Argentina, which is a solid economic country in the Americas. But at the same time, one of the things that is underlying this, one of the issues is that, you know, the Americas has not invested, the uh, United States of America has not invested in the infrastructure of the Americas. And uh, that is a problem because we have invested trillions of dollars, uh, billions of dollars in the economies and building out other countries, uh, but we have not invested in the infrastructure of the Americas. Therefore, if you can have uh, 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 good roads, if you can have communications, it, chaos breaks out, poverty, and that's what's happening. We've neglected our neighbors and they're impoverished. We haven't invested and they look to us for that kind of investment. And so therefore people are coming from the Americas across our borders, they're running from poverty, they're running from crime. And we have to take a better uh, look at this and I think the president is, you know, by his trip, uh, is focusing on that problem. And so the next president is going to have to, re and Congress, are really going to have to be taking a close look at the Americas. Okay, great. I'd like to look forward to uh, this has been our roundtable session and our guest has been Hector Rodriguez, political strategist. Thank you. <laughs>